let's get a hymnal tonight and turn to hymn number 269. 269, let's stand together and sing. Amen. Amen. I was thinking about that. I tried to preach one time on hind's feet. And the psalmist, I believe, said he made my feet like hind's feet. And uh, at a higher ground, the, the defense that the hind had was just climbing higher. And uh, you get up there where the air was, uh, I don't know, I, I call it thinner or whatever. And some of the other, uh, maybe something that would harm the hind, uh, couldn't reach those heights. And uh, they could climb the rocks. And uh, that's a blessing. I'm going to try to preach tonight on the seven spirits before his throne. And uh, Petey said to me, he said, I'm interested in the uh, sermon, said that he had wondered about that. And uh, I was thinking after he hears the sermon, he may still be wondering about that. <laughs> uh, and I told him, I said, I don't know if I know much about it. I've read that. And it just got on my heart, I thought, uh, and I don't know. Uh, maybe there's some others that give some insight in that. And if the Lord shows you anything about that, you tell me about it. Uh, but it is important, and I don't know exactly, but there's some things in the book of Isaiah, I believe, that that, uh, that I do believe that connects with it. But it's good to be in the Lord's house. Uh, already, I, I just enjoyed the song tonight, amen. And I'm feeling good in the Lord. I just, uh, I thank the Lord. To be in his house. I appreciate the prayer. Let's look in the book of Revelation first tonight. I'm a thinking, and then we'll go to uh, 
maybe Proverbs and Isaiah. But I'll look at uh, this verse a little bit and, uh, that's kind of on my heart. And it says there in, uh, in verse 4 that uh, it says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace uh, from him which is, which was, and which is to come from the seven spirits uh, which are before his throne. And I'll look at that and trust the Lord to help just think some things from this verse. And then I believe in the, verse, in the book of Isaiah chapter 11. And we'll go back then and read. Well, let's just give those verses now. And it said, There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall, go out of, shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and, of, and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, again, in Jesus' name, we approach the throne of grace. Thank you for this, being here tonight. And your mercy on us, we thank you, uh, Lord, for helping. I pray you'd help in the message, and pray for these prayer requests, things mentioned, things uh, not mentioned, as unspoken. I pray you'd just help. Needs on our heart, Lord, We those that are grieving, and then other needs that are urgent, and uh, extended uh, hospital stays, need help, need prayer. Uh, Lord, we pray you'd help. And I want to thank you. I pray uh, those that are lost, that uh, it's on our heart, praying for and on the hearts of people here, that we'd see them saved for Christ's sake. I pray you'd help in the message. May it come forth as you'd be pleased with tonight. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll look at this verse again. I I tried to preach, uh, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, and it got on my heart just thinking about our church. I was thinking about, and I was preaching about, uh, and mentioning about our young people that are coming on, and I praise God for that, and, and I preached on, you know, that, uh, that the Lord is still, uh, He's still God in the present. And, I, and I, after I, uh, this verse here would have been a good verse to have used in that, because it says here that uh, God is... Uh, which is and which was and which is to come. Uh, God lives in the present and in the past and in the future. And uh, I want to think just a little bit about that. And I was thinking about, somebody had mentioned to me about uh, uh, in, the, in the New Testament, we see many places uh, where that uh, reference is made, Jesus himself doing that. And uh, quotes are given, partial quotes, of Old Testament verses, uh, things in the Old Testament. And uh, in the book of Romans, I'd, uh, I had read, I think, one time, perhaps there are that many, uh, that there are more, I'd read there, there are more references, uh, Old Testament references in the book of Romans than is any of the other epistles. And uh, I'd read that there were 70. And, uh, but I was looking, trying to research that some today, and uh, where I was researching, said there are over 60 uh, references in the Old Testament, uh, for, for, in the book of Romans from the Old Testament. But somebody had mentioned to me about uh, the references in, that's given in the New Testament from the Old Testament that, uh, that they were looking up some of those going back and reading, you know, maybe, maybe just be a partial reference, but they were reading the the. the the surrounding circumstance that was taking place at the time. And that was a blessing. So I'm thinking about that God is the God who, who is and who was and who is to come. Uh, past, present, and future God. And I was thinking about that. It got on my mind. I was thinking, in, in, and I was thinking from a viewpoint, I thought about our country. And it's, it's so sad that, uh, that our country, we've got those that, uh, of course, they want to rewrite history and uh, want to discard the history of our country. But, you know, I was thinking about our, our church. If we, if we think about our church tonight, then it would be real foolish to, to discard the history of Bethany Baptist Church. And, uh, and rather than doing that, uh, we draw strength from it. We thank God. And uh, the inspiration I've had since I've been here, I've had different ones tell me just on, on several occasions and they'd mention someone and said, Preacher, you didn't have opportunity of knowing them. And then they'd tell me something good and special that 
about that person and the inspiration they had been to them and what, how they'd influenced the church, the community, and so forth. And it's a blessing history. Well, God deals with that too. And uh, is the Bible, I mean the history, and we learn from that. We're, we're, we're blessed, we're encouraged by that. And, uh, and God used that. As I said, an example of the book of Romans, if there is more than 60 in just one epistle, 16 chapters of references from the Old Testament, you said, what is that? That's the history, that's the past. And uh, then I got to reading something that, uh, we've got a great big God, haven't we? And uh, I like to uh, mention that before to, to, at the Voice of the Martyrs Conference, said, uh, the leader of that, he, he spoke and he said, God is large and he's in charge. And he's large and he is in charge. That's a very true statement. And a big God. And I'm thinking about things in the past. And I read, I don't know, I just read this. And this would be some that know more about the stars. You know, we go out and look at night and look at the stars. But I'd read where that uh, the, the star that we're looking at and the light of the star we're looking at is not the present light. But, that, but the, from the naked eye, the stars that we can see with just the naked eye, that uh, the light that we're seeing is there's, it's probably been four years of getting here. And uh, <laughs> y'all got to thinking about that. And it said that uh, one of the stars that, uh, that if, you could, if, you, if, if it were possible for you to be on that star, and if you had a telescope that you could look to the earth from that star, that you'd be looking what you were doing nine years ago. So I got to think about that. It just blowed my mind. I said, we've got a big God, ain't we? But the encouraging thing to me, God is the God of the past and the God of the present and the God that is yet to come, the future. And he's living in all tenses tonight. And I want to thank God for that. And then give me that I was thinking about Prophecy. Give me that little thing I found on prophecy. Uh, the real value of prophecy uh, is that it occupies us with a person, not merely events. And you say, who is that person? It's none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And we've said it over and over again. When you're looking anywhere in the Bible, you're looking for Jesus. And we see in our verses in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 11, when we get there and look at that, and then I've got God lives in the present and the past and the future. And uh, he can see all of it at the same time. That's exciting to think about, isn't it? We've got a great God. And so you and I down here, uh, we, 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 then we wonder with the psalmist, uh, who is man that thou art mindful of him? And in the book of Psalms 103, I'm glad he remembers that we're just dust and he remembers our frame. And uh, I thank God for that too, don't you? And so I'm looking tonight in the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, and I want to think, and as I said, I've read many times the book of Revelation and those verses where it talked about the seven spirits. And God deals in sevens. We, we know that. That's very obvious. You know, the seven churches, seven golden candlesticks, and on and on sevens. Now, some say that the number seven, and that's a study within itself, numbers in the Bible, but uh, the number seven I have have read before, that the number seven is a number of perfection. But I believe, it, I believe more than that, it's a number of completeness and a number of fullness. And so we see in this, uh, the seven spirits, and some think here, the seven spirits, that it's talking about uh, a manifestation rather than, than separate individuals. And we see that in the Trinity. Uh, you know, uh, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and these three are one. You know, the Bible tells us that. We believe that. Uh, so we see in the seven spirits before the throne. But in the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, and it said that he shall come forth uh, rod out of, out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of the, the roots. And, you know, in the book of Isaiah said he is as, you know, uh, uh, as, as a branch out of, of dry ground. So we see the Lord Jesus. And then it mentions Jesse. And, of course, uh, the, the father of David, and many times it mentions David, you know, he's of the seed of David, Jesus, the Lord Jesus, Christ of the tribe of Judah. And uh, somebody said that Jesus could have been, uh, you know, could have been any nationality. And, of course, that's a confusion, you know, and, and a lot of confusion. I'm confused about things myself, not saying this critical and negative. But, uh, no, he couldn't have been any 
uh, he was a Jew. And if you read and understand the Bible, the Jews, you know, Paul talks about that in the book of Romans, uh, what advantage did the Jew have? And he, he lets us know in many ways. And we got our Bible tonight that we're holding in our hand came through the Jewish nation. Uh, the Messiah came through the Jewish nation. He is of the seed of David, a Jew. And he's of the tribe of Judah, a Jew, one of the tribes of, of, of the nation of Israel, the Lord Jesus Christ. And God designed and planned all of that. And uh, then the Jews, you know, rejected him, didn't receive him, became his own, his own received him not. And partial blindness has happened to the Jews. And then in the book of, of, of Isaiah chapter 11, uh, we see as we read on in that chapter, I believe we see there uh, the kingdom that's coming, the reigning on earth for a thousand years, the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, talking about things that's going to change. The book of Romans says even creation is groaning. And you say, why is creation groaning? They're groaning because of the curse. And one day it's going to be lifted. And it talks about in that chapter, and we've talked about that before and others have, that the lion is going to eat grass with the ox. And I got to thinking about that. I mean, just running back my mind, we always had a milk cow. That's where we got the milk. You know, we had a milk cow. My dad always, all our growing up years, we had a cow. And uh, I thought about that. That'd be something. If dad looked down there and seen that cow and see a lion walking along beside of it, you know, and you milking the cow and reach over and pet the lion. Uh, you know, that'd be something exciting, wouldn't it? And different. And it's going to be that way one day. And the other things, you know, a kid playing uh, on the, on the, uh, with a snake, you know, a poisonous snake. And uh, things are going to be, it's going to change. It's going to be there. The curse is going to be lifted. And uh, God's going to change things. It's going to be all in harmony. And uh, he's going to do that. That's part of what's yet to come, the regathering of Israel and so forth. And then, you know, the, the, the prayer, the model prayer we call it that Jesus taught us. Did you know he taught us to pray, thy kingdom come? We've read that, ain't we? In the, in the model prayer, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And part of that prayer says, thy kingdom come and let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. It's coming, amen. And he's, he's taught us, you and I, to pray for it, amen. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalm 122, verse 6. And so it's all going to take place. This part of what we read in the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, as we read on in that chapter. And so prophecy, you know, it's, it's interested in, in to study and, and we think about prophecy. And I like that what I read. Prophecy is not all just uh, to, to occupy us with the events. But praise God, it occupies us with the person. You say, what's going to take place during the millennial reign? The Lord Jesus Christ is going to reign, amen. One of our memory verses, the book of, uh, where is it? Luke chapter 1, verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. The Lord Jesus Christ reign over the house of Jacob uh, forever. There it is, 133. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Uh, so that's, that's yet to take place. That's going to happen. Uh, then we see here in, in Isaiah chapter 11, and I'll read some verses there. And let's read the verse, and give me verse Proverbs 9, verse 10, and where it talks about the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. As we look at these seven from the book of Isaiah chapter 11, and I believe it connects with the seven spirits that we're thinking about in the book of Revelation. Now, there could be, and there, no doubt there is more than, uh, a whole lot more than what I, I've seen. And many times I think I'm just maybe not even scratching the surface. And that's exciting about this book right here. You read and read and read it. Amen. There's nobody, but nobody will ever exhaust this book. And these people that have studied it for 50, 60 years, preached it for 50, 60 years, and... Uh, they still, you know, it's alive and fresh to them. I heard one preacher preaching. He was so excited. And he said, praise God, that he had preached through the years over and over again about the second coming of Jesus. But he said, it's fresher and more alive to me today than it's ever been. This book right here. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom here. It said in the book of Proverbs chapter 10. We're going back to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. And it said, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now we see Jesus, and this excites me, 
And I tried to preach in a revival, and I preached it before, and uh, I don't know how many times. But I read in a book, this gives me some consolation, that a sermon's not yours till you preach it 20 times. And I've not preached it 20 yet. Uh, so it's from the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 18. And it talks about Jesus there, I believe. And it said he's like a ship on the sea. Solomon talked about, he saw that. And uh, the ship on the sea. And from reading that and thinking about that, and in the sermon I tried to preach, I believe Jesus is the ship. And the sea is this world. You know, Jesus came from heaven, all the harmony of heaven and the praise of heaven and came to this world uh, to be, to be uh, to the contradiction of sinners. The Bible terms it that way. You know, they tried to trick him and so forth, tried to kill him before the cross and he'd escape from different things. And they tried to tempt him. They'd ask questions just to try to cross him up and do all those things. And it wasn't that they were interested in an answer. They just had a vindictive against the, the Savior, the Lord Jesus. And he said this in, in John chapter 15. Jesus said, they hated me and they'll hate you. So we see that that's true too. And uh, so um, they hated him without a cause, the Bible said. No cause. You know, like what the thief on the cross said, amen. And he got saved that day, didn't he? And he said, you know, we deserve what we're getting. But this man here has done nothing amiss. And, I, and Pilate himself said four different times, I don't find no fault in him. But I, the ship on the sea was Jesus and on the sea. And I'm in, in a sermon, and it excites me yet to think about it. Now, when Jesus in his humanity here on earth, he was directed and led by the Spirit of God. You know, he says that in Luke chapter 4, quoting from the Old Testament in the book of Isaiah 61, that the Spirit of the Lord have anointed me. He said to preach the gospel and he goes on and gives that verse and then he stops and he, he leaves part of that verse out for a reason. And, but anyway, uh, the, the ship on the sea and the Lord Jesus, but the, but the sailing vessels back then depended on two things and they depended on the sky and it depended on the wind and the sky was, they, they looked at the stars and the sun was, was a guiding compass for them. And then the wind was the thing that moved them forward. They were totally dependent on that. When Jesus walked on the earth human, in his humanity, he was totally dependent on the Father in heaven. And then on the, on the Spirit as he, as he walked here up on the earth, the wind and the Spirit typified the wind. But we see here uh, the seven things. It said the Spirit of the Lord. And that's in, in my first point. There the Spirit of the Lord, and he was directed and led by the Spirit of God. And then it said wisdom, wisdom. And you know, in the book of Proverbs, you read about wisdom, and in the book of Proverbs, wisdom is personified. And you say, who it's talking about? It's talking about Jesus. And in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and I don't know if I give you, I didn't give you that verse, but I believe it's in verse 30. And it says there in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, that Jesus has made unto us wisdom. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Made unto us wisdom. And I was thinking as I tried to study this, in, the, in our, particularly I believe in our last days that we're in. You know, it says in the Bible in Timothy that in these last days that they're going to be deceiving and being deceived. And that's very true. And, you know, it, it, people, it, it, you, can, you can be caught up in, in uh, being, deception, being deceived. In fact, the Bible said in the latter days there that in the book of Thessalonians, I believe it is, said that they'll believe a lie and be down. Believe something that's false. Well, I've talked to people and they'd tell you things and it was contrary to the Bible, but they, they, they're totally convinced in their mind they believe it. Well, you say, what are they believing? They believe in something false. And that's so sad. You know, there's, I believe there's multitudes of people that's believing that they're headed for heaven. But they've never trusted Christ and salvation. They're trusting in something else. And somebody else has told them. It makes me think of a, of, of a little bit. It had some humor in it. And it was, but it was such a blessing. And it was uh, the preacher that told you, as far as I know, I don't know if he knew personal uh, uh, of the story, but it was a true story. A missionary was on the, or there was a fellow on the field as a missionary and he was, uh, we call them liberal preachers, you know, and he was up there preaching, you know, just be good and, you know, you feel good about yourself and all that mess, you know, and uh, you're all, you're okay and I'm okay. 
The only problem with that is ain't none of us okay. That's the problem. That's the reason we need salvation through the Lord Jesus. We've got a sin problem. So he's making them feel good. He's telling them that, you know. I don't know if you call that preaching or not. But, uh, and the fellow that I'd heard tell it said there's about 45 on that particular case. I believe it was. There's a number of people got saved. And so he's sitting there listening at it himself. But he knew better. He was safe. But anyway, he, he, he was confused about it. So he, he, he asked the interpreter about that. And he said to the interpreter, he said, I can't believe it. He said, this fellow not preaching the gospel. He said, what he's told these people here and all these people getting saved. And said that interpreter smiled real big and said, oh, I said, I never told him what he said. And said, I told him about Jesus. <laughs> he was saved, you know. Amen. He said, I never told him what he said. I told him about Jesus. And they got saved. You know, that fellow could talk all day. But, you know, you don't have to, you just flip the channel a little bit and you see people, they're, they're supposedly representing the, the Bible, the Word of God, and, and, and uh, Jesus and some of the things that they say. You know, they, they just beat one drum. That's all they ever beat. And uh, they don't talk much about Jesus. They, I've heard some of them about it. all they talk about is, you know, sending them some money. You know, that's what they talk about. I heard one the other day. He said that uh, he's planting a seed, you know. But it's kind of interesting to me that all the seed he's talking about planting, he's wanting me to plant one and send it to him. But he said that seed planting worked out for him. So that's the reason I live in a $2 million house. No, he just saved a whole lot of people, sent him a whole lot of money. That's the reason he lived in a $2 million house. And he bragged about that, you know. But uh, I don't know how it's going to work out for him at the end of the way. But, you know, if the Lord was to give you that, that's all right with me. I wouldn't worry about that. But the way he's coming about it deceives what I'm talking about. We need wisdom, discernment, spiritual discernment. Then he's talking about understanding. And I thank God for that understanding. That's it. Very important, isn't it? You know, the songwriter wrote this, and I'm glad for that. We'll understand it all better by and by. And that's true, too, isn't it? But, you know, I like something there. Is it second? Timothy, where is it? Chapter 2, verse 7. Or what, what was that verse I had? It said, Consider what I say, the Lord gives the understanding in all things. We need understanding, don't we? You say, who's going to give that to us? The Lord is. You know, it's, it, it's, you know on the road to Emmaus, you know, there they are, uh, the, uh, the two that were there, and they were talking, they didn't know they were talking to Jesus. They talked to him, and he began, the Bible said it, Moses and the prophets, and expounded unto them the scriptures concerning yourself. And they still didn't understand it, but you know what Jesus did for them? We read that there, the book of Luke. It said he opened their understanding. You know, whenever this down there in Acts chapter 16, and Lydia, the seller of purple, the Bible said God opened her heart. <laughs> you know, I'm glad God's in the opening business, aren't you? He can open my heart. He can open our understanding to where we can understand. That's a blessing, isn't it? You say, what are you excited about that? I've experienced that a lot of times. In, in reading the Bible, I go to it and I say, Lord, I need your presence here. And in reading some that I've read before and read a number of times, and all of a sudden, you say, what happens? He opens my understanding. And I'm understanding. And I said, well, thank God. And I just praise him. That's exciting, ain't it? You know, I've had people tell me, said, there's a verse that tripped me up, you know, and I couldn't. And, uh, but preacher sure God, God has done something. He's opened my understanding of it. And I praise him for it, understand him, and then counsel. You know, in the book of Isaiah, that's a wonderful verse. I believe Brian used that children's church a while back. Uh, Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, a son's given, and the government be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, and the Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And it said, the spirit of counsel. You know, all of us, as life goes on just on a daily basis, there's decisions to be made, aren't they? And some of them are, are, are much more weighty than others. I had a friend of mine I'm thinking about, and he had a, a medical situation, very serious. And he shared with me, and he, and he shared with me that verse. He said, you know, Jesus is a counselor. And he said, decision to be made. You know, the doctor put it out there, and sometimes there's uh, two or three things maybe that they say, this is, this is what you could do. This is 
avenues to take, and this is the situation of this and that and, and the side effects and all this other thing. And then there's a decision to be made. And he told me and he gave testimony. He said, Jesus is a counselor. And he said, I'm at peace uh, in the decision that I believe that to God, I've went to him for counsel. <laughs> there's a verse in the book of Proverbs that said, in a multitude of counselors, there's safety. And I thank God for people that give you counsel. And I've went to people, a lot of people, for counsel and asked them for advice. And counsel said, this is a situation. I want you to give me some counsel if you can and, and help me. And, uh, and I've, I've had valuable counsel from Christians. And I thank God for that. But then there are decisions, you know, and you get uh, personal things and maybe with dealing with health issues. And when it comes down to it, maybe family, you know, you could get the family together and pray and ask them, say, what, what do y'all think? And they might tell you. But ultimately, the person that has the issue has to make the decision. I found that out, and you found that out. But I won't thank God tonight. You say, who can help you with that counsel? We've got the greatest counselor there is. And the blessing of it is, if we can get the counsel from him, then whatever he gives us is going to be all right. And there's a verse in Psalm, where's that at? 33 somewhere. I don't know if it was at Psalms. And I like that. It's talking about counsel. And it said, The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. And the thoughts of his heart to all generations. I'm glad the counsel of the Lord standeth forever. And you say, Why could the counsel of the Lord stand forever? Because he can't give any wrong counsel. I mean, his counsel is perfect and right. Amen. You know, somebody, and I may give somebody the wrong counsel, not, and we may do that, not intentionally, but we've, maybe we give some counsel and it don't work out. You know, our government's even trying to sue preachers, you know, in relation to that. You know, counseling people, do you know that? And then speech, you know, they're talking about the hate speech, you know, what they would call hate speech if we tell somebody they're a sinner, you know. And... Uh, all this mess that they've got. It's just unbelievable what's going on right now, isn't it? But I'm glad you said, well, how, how come you encourage? We've got a God that was and that is and that shall be. And I want to praise God for that. And he's made a star and I get out there and look at it. And I think I'm seeing the light of the star that's shining now. But in reality, I'm seeing the light that took nine years to get here. <laughs> Ain't we got a big God? In this universe, you say, what excites you about all that? The God that we're serving, the one true and living God, made the whole thing. And you say, I bet it took him weeks and months and years to ever do all that. Well, I just read in the book of, uh, of Genesis where he just said, God said, let, let there be light. <laughs> let there be lights in the ferment. Let the sun, the moon... And the herbs and the grass and the seed, producing seed of its kind, just let it be. You said, what did he do? He just spoke it all into existence. And the old country preacher said, praise God, he got out there and said he stood on nothing. <laughs> and he just created things out of nothing. And he went on and said, and said there wasn't nobody there that said nothing about it because there wasn't nobody there to say nothing. And I, we've got a God that big, haven't we, tonight? And we'll praise God, the counsel, and then his might. Well, we could talk about that. Book of Isaiah again, 9 verse 6. Jesus, government should be upon his shoulder. What's another name that he has there? The mighty God, his power. You know, he said that in Matthew chapter 28. gave us a great commission. He said, all power is given to me, both in heaven and earth, and in knowledge. Knowledge. Second Timothy, check it, Peter 3, verse 18. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you say, well, how are you going to grow in knowledge? We're going to study the book. The knowledge. Amen. You know, the truth of the matter is, you know, if you got some knowledge of this book here, uh, I heard, I believe Dr. Stanley's talking about, uh, some person he's talking about said he had doctors and educated people and all them people in his church and and uh, he said he wasn't intimidated by that. 
He said, most of them didn't know nothing about the Bible. You know, he was telling them something that, that they probably didn't know a whole lot about. And he was telling them the truth that that's going to be everlasting. The counsel of the Lord endure forever. And the word of God is forever settled in heaven. And then the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. You know, it's sad in our country, isn't it? That we've seen a, we've seen a time, we've seen a time even in my lifetime years back. You know, there was some respect for the man of God for the house of God and for a Christian. But boy, that's just about wiped out, isn't it? And we're living in a, in a lawless society. Isn't that terrible? You know, we've got laws and stuff. I Just recently on TV, you know, the protests, they have the Supreme Court justice, you know, they outside their house protesting and so forth. Did you know we've got a law that that's illegal to do that? To try to influence the uh, judge? put pressure on them, intimidate them, whatever. That's illegal for them to be out there on, on the laws of our book. But you said, why don't they do something about it? Well, it's the left wing doing it. If it was somebody else protesting for a right thing, then they would arrest them and do something about it. But that's how warped it is. A lawless society. Did you know God created government and you can't govern a country without some laws and regulations, amen? That's just like... Uh, the law of not stealing. You know, it's illegal. It's supposed to be illegal, you know. Used to, shoplifting was a serious thing. You get caught shoplifting. Isn't that something? Some of the orders out there in California, you steal up to $1,000. It's all right. <laughs> How would you like to be the owner of the store that here they come in and you got security guards there and they just stand and watch them pick up things and carry it out? I saw a fellow pushing a great old big 50-inch TV out in the box and everything. He's pushing it through the door, stealing it, taking it home with it. You say to do anything, but no, just let him go, let him take it. Yeah. I don't know why I got off on that, but that's sad. You say, you say, well, that don't affect me. Yeah, it does. You're paying for that. I'm paying for that. Did you know the, the merchants and the stores have always done that? to take care of the shoplifting. You say, what do they do? They just raise the prices on us that are paying. So the people that's going to the register and being honest and paying for what they get when they go out, they're paying for it for a high price to take care of them that's pushing them out the door. So you say, what do you feel about that? I think you'll lock them up, don't you? Lock them up. And you say, what, what to do? Well, throw away the key. <laughs> anyway, that's a good thing to finish. Pete, I don't know if you ever put that on the video or not, but <laughs> might hear something from that. Seven spirits before the throne. Now, I, I believe there is some connection with Isaiah. And we've got a wonderful Savior tonight, haven't we? And he's the God that is and that was and it is to come. And he still keep blessing and I think in my thoughts, and I praise God for that, that there are those that are going to carry on. And I believe, and I, and, I, and I want to believe that and think that to the glory of God, don't you? That this church here, the spiritual heritage it started out with, and, uh, and the history of it is important. You say, why is history important? Well, we talk a lot here about Charles Spurgeon. And I get quotes, I had a quote Sunday. He said, ain't no saint can out-believe God. God never has out-promised himself. Well, that's a wonderful thought, hasn't it? I've got a book that's got 2,200 of his quotations, and I just read them and enjoy them. And that's back in the 1800s. I'm getting blessed in something from history. You said, well, where, where could you ever find a verse with that book of Hebrews? Give me that verse, praise God, and I'm going to finish up on this, I think. It said, he being dead, yet speaketh. And I thought about that. You know, there's some of my loved ones, your loved ones have went on. But what they told you and what they told me and their life and their influence still speaking to my heart today. Amen. I want to thank God. Let's stand and pray tonight. That's the Lord to help us. Maybe there's other needs, things on your heart. And uh, for prayer, uplifted hand, our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we lift our hands toward heaven and there's things on my heart and things on our heart that we need pray, we need prayer, we need help from heaven and I, I thank you Lord 
I need the prayers of those I love. And I thank you for prayer, for people praying for me. And I thank you, Lord, we can approach the throne of grace. I pray for every need. Those that's been spoken tonight, some unspoken, and others that's on our heart we've not expressed tonight for prayer. Lord, I pray you'd help. A lot of needs our country tonight. And Lord, we know that what we need is a turning back to God. A revival of believing God and believing the Word of God and obeying the Word of God. Lord, I pray you'd help us. I pray you'd have mercy on our country. I pray you'd be with us. And we'll thank you again. I pray for those special needs uh, that's there that we know about and others that we don't. I pray you'd help. Thank you tonight. Thank you, Lord for all you do and your mercy and grace. Lord, I could just go on and on. We count our many blessings and we name them one by one. And it always surprises us what the Lord has done. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.